friends welcome back to my channel sass here i'm here for another video of life after lockup live after lockup y'all almost didn't have a video <laughs> y'all almost didn't have a video child honey this weekend has been ooh, but i'm here i'm a day late but i'm here got this video for y'all y'all ain't gonna keep y'all Y'all know I be lying sometimes. Y'all know sometimes I just be lying. I hope I don't keep y'all. We'll see. Y'all, let's start off with Amber and Puppy, child. Do y'all know what I want from Puppy? I want that girl to be happy. I mean, as we know, Amber... Tried to choke her up last week. <laughs> but then the next day or two days or three days, I don't know how long it, it was. We have Amber getting a phone call from Puppy. And um, Amber's boyfriend was sitting there in the cut, honey. He, he was like this. <laughs> he is not down for the Puppy and Eric drama, child. Anyway, Amber was like, what's up? What's up? And so Puppy was like, hey, how are you? It's like, girl. And so Amber was like, why are you calling me? She was like, who else am I supposed to call? You my home girl. I mean, yeah, we had words. And yeah, you was going to choke me up. And yeah, you was going to beat me up. But it's all good, girl. I need for you to come on over here and talk to me because I ain't got no other friends. So, of course, Amber, she goes over there. And um, when she walks in, honey, there's some shot glasses all over the place. And they made it seem like that, you know, puppy done fell off of the wagon. And, you know, she she's just been drinking and soaring and all this stuff. And Amber thought that maybe she was, you know, back doing some D-R-U-G-S. So, Puppy's laying there, and Amber shakes her and is like, girl, get up, get up. And so, Puppy's like, I really didn't see no difference than when she was laying there when she was awake. You can't tell. You can't tell a difference with Puppy. So, Puppy gets up. They play the dramatic music. And so, Amber was like, what's going on? What is happening? I mean, you look like a whole dish rag out here. Where's Eric? Eric gone somewhere, y'all. And so, Puppy says that um, she had a miscarriage. And, of course, it has to be depressing and sad. And I was like, oh, no. Just, can we get some happiness for Puppy? Damn. So Amber, she was like, man, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, this happened. Are you okay? How are you feeling? And of course, Puppy, she's like, I don't know how I'm feeling. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like, girl, it's like pulling teeth with Puppy. But Puppy said that she went to go get an A before the miscarriage because she thought, you know, I don't need to have this baby. But she said that once she got there, that she felt like that she wanted this baby. That she wanted to have this baby. But she wasn't able to, and she had a miscarriage. But she let it be known that, um, you know, before the miscarriage, that she did want um, the baby. And then Amber... Um, she talked about how she got A and A, and she said, listen, she said, I was out there in the street, I was getting high, you know, I got pregnant, and Amber said she knew that she ain't gonna bring no baby into this world, knowing how she's living, she was in and out of jail, she had been to prison twice, and she said that there was no way she was gonna bring 
um, a child into this world knowing that somebody else is going to have to raise it. That's the decision she made. And if that's the way Amber felt, then so be it. And so her and Puppy, child, they don't they don't look over the little, you know, assault that was gonna happen at the party. And so um Amber asked Puppy, you know, is this going to hurt Eric and her relationship? And so Puppy said, Listen, that relationship died along with that baby. I was like, oh, Mm, that was harsh. We gonna see Eric again in his fashions. Puppy, you gonna be all right. You gonna be all right, girl. You gonna be all right. Hey. So then we have Amber. She go back to TC. TC doing some type of work. And, you know, she was like, I know you don't want to hear about it. He said, no, I don't want to hear about it. But go ahead. I know you're going to talk about it anyway. So Amber is just telling TC about it. And then he had his thoughts on the A word. Now, he knows that Amber done had some A words. But he thought that he'll give his thoughts on it. Okay, TC. All right. We, we heard what you got to say. So then they start talking about having children, and TC was saying that he wasn't sure about having kids just yet. Now, y'all, I know my brain is a little at times, but when we first met TC and they was throwing them axes, didn't they both say they wanted kids? Didn't they say that? What's changed? TC, did you see Amber cut up in that kitchen? And you said, oh, buddy. <laughs> Stay down. Stay down, buddy. Stay down there. Don't you rise. <laughs> Let's think about this. Is that what it is? Y'all hear him say that he was almost 40? I thought that man was like 50-some years old. You mean to tell me this man ain't in his 40s? Ooh. Where they at in Georgia? Georgia. 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 Some of y'all's paws got them hard water. There's no way that man 38 years old. There's no way that man 39 years old. All right, then. So anyway, child, let's move on. Child, let's talk about Chaz and Branwyn, child. Y'all, Chaz, he ain't went home yet. He's still there. <laughs> what? He got a job, right? Don't he work? How long has he been in Oregon? So he's still there, walling in his pity. He's sad because Branwyn done told him to kick rocks. So, he goes through her little account, and he sees where, I guess some guy, some stranger hit her up, and apparently, from what I got of it, Branwyn, her friend Tara, and some dude, they had them a little menage a trois. Is that what I got out of it? Yeah, Bradwin. She with her friend Tara, the one I guess they had the threesome. And not with Chaz. See, Chaz mad about that. Chaz, you mad because you wasn't included? <laughs> honey, you wasn't included, honey. You mad? And then we have the other friend who who's like Helen Keller. She don't even say nothing. She just sit over there to cut like this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, girl, why are you on camera if you're not participating in the conversation? So Tara is talking to Branwyn about Chaz and how secretive he is and how he ain't the one for you. And Branwyn was talking about how Chaz done called her a prostitute. Did Chaz call her a prostitute, y'all? I miss that. He called her one. Child Chaz done called her that. 
So anyway, but again, she didn't say nothing about what she did. It's all Chaz's fault. So then the homegirl is showing her some drawings and some artwork from Yola. See, Yola is staying with Tara. And how about them producers being shady? Zooming in on Tara, having her hand on Bradwin's leg. Them producers shady. Having Tara and Bradwin, when they flop down on the bed, they got that mirror on the ceiling. Because, see, when Chaz was talking about the little threesome, it was very descriptive. And so the producers just lined it up. And so we can see Shady. Ah. So anyway, so Yola is, I guess, he's the next Picasso. So Tara is really pushing for Bradwin and Yola to get together. Now, Bradwin's putting on her makeup. And here comes Yola. Yola said, hi, Bradwin. When I heard his voice, I was like, that don't match your face. Y'all, he got all those tattoos on his face. Now, I said that he looked like he may be on the ID channel. That's what I said. But he also looked like he might be one of them little rappers that be on SoundCloud. <laughs> be like, Yola, who is it? Yola, what's your real name, Yola? I know your mama. That is not your God-given government name. It's Yola. Now, y'all, I would go into what Yola and Branwyn talked about. I have no idea. I have no idea what Yola was talking about. Honey, he was talking in circles. And then Bradwin looked like she haven't woke up. Bradwin was like this. Yeah. 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 It's like her and Puppy are trying to compete with who's not awake. Wake up! So this is the gist of it. Yola, from what I gather, Yola said, listen, what we need to do is leave everything in the past. Because us as a couple, we were toxic. We was a hot mess. I did you wrong. But see, I done spent time in prison. I done worked on myself. Yola! And I want to get back with you, girl. I want us to work. But you know, if you if you don't want to be with me, that's fine. Just let me know. But just give me a chance. See, that's what I got out of. And so Bradwin, I still don't know what she said. I think she said she's not sure. Is that what she said? That's what we're going to go with. Let's move on. Child, let's talk about Taylor and Chance. Let's talk about Taylor and Chance. Now... As we know, Chance thinks that Taylor isn't ready to get married because she has a secret. She's holding something back. Something is telling him that Taylor's not being truthful. He ain't thinking about that he's running up these bills, okay? Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. I got the perfect... You know, credit score. So let's spend. He's not thinking about that. So Taylor is keeping a deep, dark secret. So it's time to go to the doctor for an ultrasound. Now, I don't know. How far along is Taylor? How far along? Have they said how far along Taylor is? I tell you what. Chance is in that truck, got the fresh haircut, he got the shades, he missed the cool. He says he's making all the monies. So they get to the ultrasound place. So the woman said that the baby's healthy, strong heartbeat. They don't want to know if it's a boy or a girl. Okay, Taylor wants a boy, Chance wants a girl. But, of course, you know, I'm sure they'd be happy with either one of them. But, 
Of course, we know Taylor has had, you know, she's done lost a child in the past. So she got emotional about that. So Taylor goes to the restroom to get cleaned up. And Chad says, I may be an ass asking this. Now he's asking this woman this. But can y'all do a paternity test? Chan, now I, I, I'm confused, Sastas. I'm confused. What made Chance think that? See, Chance thinks that because Taylor don't want to get married quite yet, she done cheated on him, done got pregnant with another man, and saying that it's Chance's. See, this is what Chance is thinking. Chance, when does she have time to cheat? When have there been clues dropped? Have you seen a text? Have you found any type of men's underwear? Have you found a shirt, jeans, pants, undershirts, socks? Something to make you think that? Have you been following her around and she's been mean people around the corner? What made you think that, Chad? Y'all, I can't stand this man. I, I really can't stand Chance. He's a whole fool out here. If there was a, if, if, let's say that Taylor had been cheating on Chance. Okay, let's just say that. Don't you think that the producers, they will have been all over this. They would have included that into the storyline. They would have did some shady kind of stuff like her taking text messages like they, like they show everybody else. Who are you talking to, Taylor? I mean, they would do something. But this is Chance's explanation as to why she don't want to get married. Is she done cheated and now she pregnant. A paternity test? What y'all think, y'all? Y'all think Taylor been out here cheating. And that's not Chance's baby. And then what about the woman? The woman stand there like, yes, we can. Ha! I was like, oh, Lord. Y'all let me know in the comments. That's the, that's the comment of the day. Do y'all think Taylor been out here bumping and grinding with somebody? Y'all, let's move on. Y'all, let's talk about Kevin and Tiffany. Kevin, where'd you get them capris from? <laughs> Did y'all see Kevin's jeans? Honey, not only were they capris, honey, they were ripped to shreds, honey, torn apart. Where'd you buy them from? Kevin, why are you walking around Texas? Like, is that how y'all get down in Texas? You walking around there with some capris. Child. <laughs> now, Kevin... He said he ain't heard from Tiffany. He been calling, he been texting, ghost, okay? Ain't heard from him. So he goes over to his homeboy's house. And he's telling his homeboy. And his homeboy said, I don't even know why you dealing with Tiffany. Ain't she the one that got you caught up with that boy that you had to knock out? She seemed like she's drama. You don't need to be with her. You don't need to be with the inmate girl. Now that's what the homeboy said. Then he, the homeboy turns around and says, Now that Kayla, she's a good one. I'm like, What? So the homeboy is telling Kevin that he should be with Kayla and let Tiffany go. And so the homeboy said, Well, have you called the jails? So Kevin called the local jail. She's not in, in the jail. But then he says, no, nah, she ain't in the jail, but she got a homegirl named Kayla. I'm going to hook up with her, and I'm going to see what's going on because something had to have happened. She's been mad at me before, but we always talked about it. She ain't never ghosted me. She ain't even returned my phone calls. So the homeboy is like, well, I think you should be with Kayla. That's what I think. I'm thinking to myself, Kevin, you may need new friends. 
So Kevin meets up with Kayla, Tiffany's homegirl. And so Kayla says, guess what? She gonna leave you alone after what you sent her. And so he was like, I ain't sent her nothing. She said, you didn't send her no video. He said, hell no, I ain't sent her no video. I don't know what you're talking about. And so Kayla says, well, listen, she received a video of you in the shower and Kayla and she got pissed off. And so here is Kevin. Kevin's like, I didn't send a video. So Kevin goes through his phone and he was like, see, ain't no video here. I didn't send that. I didn't send that. And I'm thinking to myself, Kevin, do you really think she's going to keep it on your phone? The single white female. <laughs> the stalker. You think she's going to keep it on your phone? She deleted it, damn it. She ain't going to be leaving no evidence. So... He's telling the producers, ain't none of my phone. See, ain't none of my phone. Ain't none of my phone. And so the producer says, do you think that maybe she deleted it? And I was like. <sighs> and Kevin was like, oh, well, she, she could have. <laughs> oh, Kevin. So the homegirl is telling him, saying, listen, it's over. Okay? She done moved on. He said, she done moved on. She said, yeah. It's over, dude. She's gone. G-O-N-E. She's gone. Honey, she took her feet to the street, Kevin. She done went under another man. Okay? And ain't nothing you can say about it. There is nothing you can say about it. You can't be mad about it. You can't be jealous about it. Because, see, you've been banging Kayla since you've been with Tiffany. You done brought Tiffany, you done brought Kayla back to your house while Tiffany was at work. Ain't nothing you can say about it. See, this could have been prevented. But, oh, no. Oh, no. You had to do a little bump and grind. Okay? So here's Kevin. Kevin confident, eh? He confident. Him and his caprice. And he said, oh, she ain't over. We ain't over. Let me just talk to her. Everything will be fine. So the homegirl said, no, it's not fine. She don't want you. Oh, she does. Uh, she don't want you. Sure she does. Uh, she don't want to have nothing to do with you. Watch out. <laughs> Kevin said, let me show you what my powers are, honey. So Kevin is still trying to um, see what's up with Tiffany. I'm going to need for somebody to go to this clinic. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. I'm going to need for everybody involved to go to a clinic. And that's that on that. Let's move on. Child, let's talk about Sean, Sarah, and Destiny. Destiny, y'all, please get her off this show. Why is she here? Why is she here? Now, her friend and the mama and the nephew then gave her a baby shower. A total of three people. Ooh. That's, that's a sad, sad baby shower. I mean, it was sad. But she got one. She says, oh my God, I've never had a baby shower before. Now, this is Destiny. Who got Five kids. Destiny has five children. Just floating around. The world. This family member has them. The baby daddy's got them. The baby daddy's family member. Friend of a friend has a child. What the hell's going on, Destiny? You out here wandering around worried about Sean giving you money that's not going to happen. And you got five kids that you don't have no custody of any of them? Dumpster fire. Destiny. Five kids. Now listen. I'm not here to be judgy, judgy, worthy, judgy. 
when you have five children and you don't have custody of any of them and you see them when you can and you're pregnant again and the father of that child don't want to have nothing to do with you But you out here worried about your ex giving you money. Y'all, something wrong with her. She is a, she, something wrong with destiny. And the only thing I'm going to say about this is I hope that this child that she has will be healthy, happy, and loved. That's what I wish for this baby. So she called Sean. Now, I thought she already told him that she was pregnant. I guess not. So, he was like, why are you calling me? And she was like, well, I'm just here to tell you I'm, I'm pregnant. And so he was like, what? He was like, Ed, you know, I can count. And I know that ain't my baby. Why are you calling me? So she's like, because I need money. He was like, I ain't giving you nothing. I'm not giving you any money. So she was like, no, I need money, honey, honey, honey. Just foolish. So he hangs the phone up on her. <sighs> Please tell me we're not going to see Destiny anymore. I don't even care nothing about Destiny. I don't care nothing about this woman. Nothing. Y'all bring her back because she need money for this baby. Okay. All right. Love out the locker producers. Y'all go ahead and give Destiny that check so she can take care of that youngin. Five kids. So we have Sean at a convenience store. And who does he call? Kelly. I don't want Kelly on this show no more, y'all. I like Kelly. I don't want Kelly nowhere near this show no more. So he is calling Kelly about his woes and destiny and... He talks about Gracie. And he says that he wants to spend time with her. He wants to spend time with his children. He said he effed up as a father. He said that he know he was a deadbeat. He said that he know he didn't give them the love that he should have gave them. But guess what? He want to fix all that. He want Gracie to come and visit him. Stop right there, y'all. How old is Gracie? She over 18, right? Gracie ain't no, ain't, ain't no over 18, cause I'm thinking to myself, why are you asking Kelly? Can't she just get on the plane? Ain't she, she ain't over 18. Oh Lord. So, Sean says that he wants to spend more time with Gracie. Kelly said that they'll think about it, talk about it, and get back with him. He gets back to the house. There's Sarah. And he was like, oh, hey, Sarah, you know, I want to um give my employees, you know, lunch. I want to pay for their lunch. Sarah said, absolutely not. He was like, why not? I can't have no money. She said, no. No reckless spending. Okay? Tell them to go down there and eat a honey bun. That's what you do. Drink some uh, melon yellow and shut the F up. That's what they do. Put a donut in the mouth. <laughs> Ain't nobody paying for that lunch. And he was like, listen, I'm the manager of the place. And I just want to show them that I appreciate them. She said, not on our watch. Not on our dime. Sean says that he gives his chick to good old Sarah. Okay, he don't even see his buddy. Sarah got to take it care of. And she said that Sean is horrible with money. She said, if I let Sean handle money, we'll be homeless, which I think is true. We all know Sean can't handle nothing. But Sarah, you can't let them have a little bit of lunch. I mean, a little Caesar's pizza is what, $6? You can't give him $20 for three pizzas? <laughs> Sarah said, uh-uh, he ain't getting no money. 
Let them stop. Jean said that Sarah is great with money. She's she's the net Susie Orman out here in these streets. <laughs> do y'all remember Susie Orman? Y'all, I got her book. Mm -hmm. I sure enough do. Honey, she is a financial wizard, let me tell you. But anyway, child, that is Sarah, Sean, and Destiny. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about 10 seconds, y'all. Brittany and Ray, all right? Brittany and Ray, we all know Brittany want to get a prenup. Ray said that's some BS. Brittany goes and talks to a lawyer. And so Brittany's main thing is the restitution and what she gets from her parents and if they have kids. And the lawyer summed it up with a cute little bow. Said, what is Ray's is Ray's. Okay? It's his restitution here in the great state of Texas. If y'all wants to get married, it don't matter. That is Ray's debt. It does not go to you. It does not go to y'all's children if you have any. And what your parents leave you, Ray can't touch. Now, will you remember, Ray was a whole street pharmacist out here. And so Brittany's thinking... You know what? He may be hiding some money somewhere. He may done dug a hole and done put some money. Uh, uh, Brittany, if Ray had some money somewhere, wouldn't you think he would put it towards his restitution? And this is another thing. If I was a street pharmacist, honey, I would have money everywhere. Do you hear me? I would have money everywhere. They wouldn't find my money. Okay? See, because, see, just in case I get hemmed up and I go to federal prison when I get out. I never understood why people didn't do that. I'm like, why don't you street pharmacists put some money aside? Don't tell nobody. Just put the money aside somewhere. So she gets back home. And she tells Ray that she went to see a lawyer. Ray said, man, this is some BS. And so basically she tells Ray what the lawyer said. And Ray was like, I'm cool with it. And she says, you know what? We don't need no prenup. Since your debt is your debt and I ain't got nothing to do with it, I'm good. We don't need no prenup, child. Then she says, you ain't got no money floating around, right? You ain't hiding no money. He was like, no, I'm not hiding anything from you. Can we move on? Sure we can. Let's move on. Last and most definitely least. Now, Deontay went on his live and he apologized for his behavior this week and how he acted on um, this episode. This is what you're apologizing for, Deontay? There was no need for an apology. Now, we have Lindsay and Deontay Arguing, screaming, yelling down there in Tupelipa, uh, Mississippi. <laughs> y'all, what's the name of that town? Tilapia. What's the name of the town? Did I write it down, y'all? What's the name of that town? Tiptoe. Y'all, what's the name of it? Torpedo. <clears throat> what's the name of it? Alexa. What's the name of the town in Mississippi? Tupelipa. From MSGW.org, Magnolia, a small town of 2000, was the second town to build a cotton mill in the Piney Woods region of southern Mississippi. Should have known it'd, do something, it'd be something with some cotton. Y'all, it's Tupelo, okay? I'm just joking. It's Tupelo. So, they down there in good old side ditch Tupelo, Mississippi, arguing. Lindsay done called for Blaine to pick her up. Come pick me up! Come pick me up! So here comes Blaine to the rescue. Here's Deontay fussing. He done called Smooth Skin Derek. Now, while he's on the phone venting to Derek, did y'all see Big Neck Jim Bob Jr. walk behind Deontay? I was like, Deontay, move. I was like, Deontay, move. Don't you say anything. That may 
upset big neck Bob back at him. <laughs> Y'all see that boy? They done blurred out his face, but that boy's arms was as big as a tree stump. And here he is in the middle of Main Street screaming. So here comes Blaine, okay. Now before Blaine gets there, Lindsay is talking to her mom, venting to the mother. Here comes Deontay. Deontay was like, let me ask you this question. Has there been anything between you and Blaine? Is there something between you and Blaine? And Lindsay said, yeah. Lindsay said, that's why I want to break up with you because I want to be with Blaine. I said, really? I said that little heart to heart kiss on the forehead when y'all was over there working in that building, that, that's what sealed the deal? Lindsay, you just needed a reason to leave Deontay. Is that, is that what it was? It's okay, girl, you can tell me. You just needed a reason to leave Deontay. Now see, word on the curb is, is that you had no intention of getting serious with Deontay. That's what word on the curb is. See, that's what the, the, the conspiracy theorists are saying. That you and Blaine just wanted to get back on the show. You have a storyline with Deontay. That's the reason why you reached out to him. Is that why Lindsay? I ain't say that. See, that's what the conspiracy theorists of the love out the lockup say. <laughs> I'm sure you would say different. Ain't that right? Lot lizard. Okay. So, we have Lindsay. She's waiting on Blaine. You know, Deontay, he done walked off and he come talking about screw love. I'm tired of love. I'm tired of getting my butt kicked from love. So, Blaine shows up. Lindsay gets in the truck. Here's Blaine. Blaine says, is it over? And she's like, what? Is it over? Y'all done? You're done? And so she was like, yeah, we're done. He was like, oh, okay. So he shuts the door. I was like, okay, here we go. I was like, here we go. All right. I was like, here we go. We're about to see something. We are about to see some action. Blaine walks over, chest all puffed up. Here's Lindsay screaming, Blaine, Blaine, stop it, Blaine. I will leave you too. I will leave you too. I was like, Lindsay, if you don't get your bony ass in that truck. None of this would have happened if you and Deontay acted like grown adults. Lindsay, instead of you fussing on the side of Tilapia, Mississippi Main Street, why ain't you so well with your daughter playing tic-tac-toe? So Blaine is in, so, so Deontay is in his vehicle. Now I don't know what Deontay was looking for. I was like, Deontay, what are you looking for, child? So here is Blaine. What's up, dude? What's up? And so Deontay's like, what? He was like, what's up? He said, see, he said, see, I told you this is a package deal. I told you this. Where I am, Lindsay is. Where Lindsay is, I am. See, we, we together. We tethered together. And I guess you ain't man enough to handle her. I said, here we go. I said, ooh, ooh, Blaine ate his Cheerios. So Deontay says, man, if you don't get out my face questioning my manhood, know who I am. So then, editing, we see Lindsay coming out of nowhere pushing Deontay. I was like, when did they make it to the sidewalk? Because see, just a second before that, they was right there at Deontay's car. So they done made it to the sidewalk. And then Lindsay pushes Deontay, holding Blaine back. That's it. Deontay, this is why you apologize. This. Man, I thought I was about to see something. Right.
Rumble in the jungle. Honey, we didn't see nothing. So Blaine and Lindsay leave. I guess it's over. Deontay hopefully got in his car and he drove his butt home. Side note, Lindsay, answer this for me. Now somebody put in the comments that where y'all was fussing and fighting, okay, not in my comments, in somebody else's comments over there in Twitter, that while y'all, where you all was fussing and fighting, that the police station is right down the road. That's what they said in the comments, because they familiar with Tilapia, Mississippi. Now, listen, you doing all that hollering and screaming, talking about, what do you want? I got warts, bruh. Oh, Lindsay. Hmm, Lindsay. You've been all around town. The cops ain't even thinking about you, girl. And again, take care of those warts. Tired of hearing about it. Obviously, you all right because you're out there on Instagram. That's it, y'all. That's it. I've done talked long enough. What did y'all think about this fight? All this editing. Foolishness. Staging part of it. Some of that didn't even look real. Alright, y'all. That is it. That's it. Y'all know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And to my new subscribers, welcome to the family. Until next time, friends.